Hey, welcome Sunday Online Joburg Church. Hey, we're ready to rock. We're ready to have fun today. This is all about Jesus, and this is all about fun, and this is, you know, that's what we should have. We should come into church, and we should be excited. It was exciting. We had some exciting meetings this week. We, you know, we met with the worship team and, and discussed the future, discussed some great plans. That was awesome, um, and, and there's, but at the same time, there's some real trying issues going on in our country. There's some real trying issues going around the world, as you know what you've just gone through for the last couple months. There's just So let's just have fun this morning. Let's just talk serious a little bit, but let's talk about God and where his plans are. If you remember, it was um, a couple months, well, it was back in February, I did a message called, If You Were to Die Today, Would You Go to Heaven? Do you remember that message? In that message, about after I went through some beginning stuff, intro stuff, I got into the Word, and I started in Acts 10, and there's a verse in Acts 10, and I started in verse number 34, Acts 10, 34. And the Bible says this, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. God shows no partiality. God wants none to perish, but he wants all to come to everlasting life. He wants all to come to repentance. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this message. I thank you for this word. Just touch my mouth, touch my tongue, touch, touch my heart, and, and just let it be your heart, God. Let it be your spirit, Holy Spirit. You take over everything. Take over my body. Take over my mind. Take over my thoughts. Take over every single word that comes out. Use this illustration to a mighty, mighty move of God in our country, in our church, in our area. That's what's so important in our homes. Touch our homes, God, through this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You know, I, I brought some Play-Doh today because there's a word in the book of Jeremiah. If you want to turn there, in, in Jeremiah 18, and, and I'm going to start with verse number one, but, but I just want you to see that I'm going to use Play-Doh, but God uses clay. God um, uses a, a potter, and, and in this, the potter and the clay, the potter actually is making pottery, which, which could be a bowl, could be a cup. It, it, it's, it's something that they're going to use. And so I just want you to hear these words. Jeremiah 18, starting in verse number one, it says this. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. There's times God tells you something. And you are supposed to arise and go. We have to go. We have to be on our way. We, in order to be used by God, there's times that we have to get up out of our prayer. Remember, um, um, faith without action is dead. It's dead. And, and so we have to move in faith at times. Arise and go down to the potter's house. There I will cause you to hear my words. God's going to speak. He's going to speak to Jeremiah on his way doing something. God's going to show him something with the potter and with the clay. God is going to reveal himself. He says this in verse 3, Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something. He had a wheel spinning, and his hands were right there, and just touching and moving the clay and, and moving in and out and, and just molding it. So he made it, no, let me go back. Then he went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred. See, this is marred right now. There's, there's, it wasn't exactly the way it was supposed to be. Many times in our past, we haven't been how we were supposed to be. We're marred. We've made some mistakes. We've did some wrongs. We've had some troubles. We've had some issues. Right now, our country is a little bit marred. Our country is marred. And, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel. He, he, God showed the potter what to do. And, and think of the potter as God and us as the clay. 
and, and God is molding us, and God is making us. And he made it again into another vessel. We're growing. We're going to come out of this COVID-19, and we're going to be a new church. We're going to have a new vision. We're going to have new excitement for Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is going to use us mightily as we work together. Continue. As it seemed good to the potter to make, it seemed good. God was doing a good work in you, a good work in your home, a good work in your kids, a good work at your work. Verse 5, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Says the Lord, Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Remember in John, the book of John, Jesus said, Nobody can snatch you out of God's hands. All the children are in God's hands. If you're a child of God, nobody, the enemy can't, the devil can't, nobody can snatch you. It's only by your will, by your choice that you leave God. Come back to God if you're struggling right now. Let me pick up in verse 7 there. It says, the instant I speak concerning a nation, listen, God says this, the instant I speak concerning a nation, What's he saying to America right now? What's he saying to Johannesburg, Lewiston, Gaylord, um, Atlanta? What's he saying to our area right now? Continue. He says this, And concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. Ouch! If the nation, if, there's an if there, if that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent the disaster. God, says, turn from the evil, come back to the good, come back to God, and he's going to relent from the disaster that could happen if you're walking a path towards hell. He wants you to turn. And it goes on and says this, that I thought to bring upon you. God actually thought to bring the disaster upon. Ouch! We don't want God to be thinking that way. Verse 9, and that instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant. God wants to build us. He wants to plant us. We're, we need to be grounded. We need to be rooted, I'm sorry, rooted in Christ. We have to be rooted. If it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good which I said I would benefit it. God wanted to do good. God wants to benefit us. He said, but if we don't turn from our evil and wicked ways, He's not going to relent. And so here we are, verse number 11. Now, therefore, speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am fashioning a disaster and devising a plan against you. That's terrible. God actually has a plan for the evil and wicked ways. We need to stay righteous. We need to stay holy. We need to stay in the word of God. We need to stay following Jesus Christ. We need to ask and continue to work with the Holy Spirit. Let him be our helper. Let him be our guide. Let him be our teacher. Let him be our comforter. Watch this. Return now every one from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. God wants our ways to be good. You know, this Plato illustration that we're going to, as your pastor, I'm going to tell you right now, as the pastor of the Johannesburg Christian Church, I am all-inclusive. If you're a child, if you're a youth, if you're a, a baby, if, if you're an elderly, if you're mid-aged, if you're married, if you're single, if you're um, a different color, like this Plato's different color, if you're different, it does not matter. You are a child of God created in his image. That's the way we should walk. Let me continue. I know Jesus told us, go and make disciples. I know that for a fact. He said, go and make disciples of all nations. He said, go and be witnesses. We talked about that last week. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, go and be my witness to all the nations. He said, to the ends of the earth. Think about this. He said it from Jerusalem. 
in Israel. Israel to Johannesburg is 5,919 miles. That's a lot of ground to cover. If you go from Johannesburg to Israel going uh, through Detroit, say through part of Canada, say you take the bridge and, and you stop and have a little good time over there at um, Niagara Falls, and then you go down to Buffalo, New York, and you have some wings, and then you go into big city New York and you see every nation represented in New York. And then you fly out of New York and you, you, you go into London or you go to wherever you end up going, um, where you first stop before you head over to Israel. You know, you fly over part of Africa. What if you went the other way? Let's go the other way. So you, you stop at Midway in Chicago. You fly out of big city Chicago, almost as big as New York. And, and then you go from Chicago, say, down to Texas, jump Texas over to L.A. Look at all the ground you're covering just in that area. And then you go from L.A., maybe you make a stop, say, through Australia or New Zealand or Hawaii. You might want to stop in Hawaii, but then you fly past India and you fly over China and Asia and you go into Israel and you go into the Middle East. Which way are you going to go? How many nations are you going to see? How many nations are you going to touch? Look at this. I want to tell you this. In between, depending which way you go, you have white, yellow, green or olive skin people, you have brown, dark and light brown. You have red, orangish. You have all kinds of different colored people. And, and here's the thing about that. The white, the white, it's, it's a, the white culture, think about it. European descent, um, you might be from Germany, or you might be from Russia, or you could be an Italian, you could be... The Caucasian word that's used on applications, what is Caucasian? It's caulk colored. I mean, what is it? And, and, and then, you know, there's so many variations. You know, you've got the Aussies, like I mentioned. There's just much, much more. There's a lot of white people in the world. A whole lot. of. There's over a billion white people in the world. And then how about the yellow people? Oh, I know, the yellow people could represent the Chinese. Billions. There's a couple billion Chinese people. What about the Japanese? I remember I had a, a, a friend at Michigan State, my dorm at Michigan State, that lived right across the hall and me and my roommate. I know it's not funny, but on, on the early December there, we would walk across and we'd go, Torah, 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 and, and, and we bombed Kevin Kajia. Kevin Kajia, a Japanese. We were making fun of him. But we were having fun, but we were making fun. Sometimes that sarcastic joking is not right. And, and, you know, maybe it affected his family. Maybe it affected his feelings. How about right now? You are so mad at China. Don't tell me you're not. You think the coronavirus started there. Maybe it did, maybe it was planted. Yes, maybe they used that, but they had the whole plan, whoever it was, whatever it was, what, however it happened. But we're blaming China. How many junk pieces of stuff have you bought from China that you, you ordered online and you couldn't send it back? Because how can they handle your warranty? You only paid so much for it, cost more to repackage it and send it back, and who are you going to send it back to? You know, there's times that we don't understand what God's doing. But we're, we're not real happy with the Chinese right now. We need to be careful. Are you happy with all whites? We need to be careful. How about these guys? How about the olive skin color guys from the Middle East? Oh, you want to remember 9-11? Oh, okay. So you're not happy with them. Was it Iraq? Was it Iran? Was it the Chaldeans? What, what is going on with our nation? Let me tell you something about some olive-skinned people. I have a friend named Joseph Habibi from Dearborn. He's a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He has been doing an amazing work down in Dearborn, working with a white man by the name of Trey Hancock. Trey has been in Dearborn for as many years as I've known him since the early 90s. 
mid 90s. So that's 25 plus years Trey's been there. He has gone through all kinds of bad stuff. I was just down in that area and they just built a mosque right down the street from where our high school golf team used to golf. We were an all white neighborhood. And you know what? Now there's olive skinned people that are coming into our neighborhood. It's not my neighborhood, it's God's earth. They're God's people. We have an opportunity in a free country to give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. How about the browns? The brown people, the dark brown people that we call blacks. There's some other words that they shouldn't be called that you know darn well that you've used that word in the past. You should repent. We should repent. I remember, listen to this. Listen to this story. It was 1995. I'm at the Silver Dome for Promise Keepers. One month before that, one month before that, I'm at Big Rapids Resurrection Life Church, and we had a special brown man come in to talk to us. His name was Raleigh Washington. We had a mini Promise Keepers meeting there. At that mini Promise Keepers meeting, Raleigh, 1995, asked if the whites would please repent and ask forgiveness, and they would too, and we could start. So back to the Silverdome, 1996. Promise keepers. The Browns were brought up again. Every man in the stadium, 50 7,000 went down to the floor and got on the floor, sprawled out, laid out, sitting, praying, weeping, crying, hugging blacks and whites, hugging each other, all kinds, repenting, saying, I, I'm sorry, please forgive me for how I've been treating you all these years. That was 25 years ago. We had the answer. We knew what to do, when to do it. It would have never happened. I can't say never. Because sin's still in the earth. And as long as sin is in the earth and somebody doesn't have Jesus Christ in their heart, you're going to have issues between them. Let me move on, because there's other colored people too. Native Americans, Indians. There's two types of Indians. Their skin color is somewhere in there, orangish, reddish. And you know what? How about the Latinos? How are they treated? How are the Mexicans treated? Man. How many times have you walked into a party store and there he is taking your cash and you don't trust him? You don't know if he's green, if he's Indian, if he's olive skinned, if he's red skinned, if he's orange skinned, if he's yellow skinned. How about going to a hotel and a Patel, a Patel answers the phone and you can't understand him? But he's going to come in and, and register. Patels, you know, run hotels all across America. How about this? How about the Mexicans that are coming to your area right now, to the tree farms, to the berry farms, to pick, to be pickers? Do you know we had some Mexicans at, at, at one of our church that were very, very, very good people. And the, the Lunas, I'm telling you, uh, they made money in America and sent it to Mexico. And what you spend 100000 here for, they could buy a house down there in Mexico for $10,000. He could buy a house a year for what he made. He worked hard in a factory. You know why the, the, the pickers, they come from Mexico? Number one, yes, to support their families. 
but because teenagers here won't work a farm for eight, nine, ten bucks an hour. They think it's too hard to work. The Mexicans just want to support their families. We need to get these guys supporting our families. We need to get these guys supporting their families. And these guys have families at home. And these guys, and it brings up next week's message about your home. Do you have balance in your home? Are you current in your home? Are your kids in one direction and you in a different direction? What's your priorities? Let's, let's get back to this message because I've been playing with something blue. Why blue? You know why. Represents the courageous, those bold men protecting your homes, protecting your streets from what you don't like. They're here putting their life every day they get their last bit of clothes on and they grab their car keys and they walk out that door. They don't know if they're going to live or die. They put their lives on the line every single night, every single day, and we're treating them like marred clay. These guys should be lifted up and given a trophy every single day. They are by God. They are by God. Keep doing it. If you're an officer or know an officer, hug them. Thank them. Send them. Love on them. It's important to show them Jesus Christ. They could die. If they don't know Jesus Christ, they could die. Those officers mean a whole lot to us. And we need them. Because somebody's going to run a red light today. We had Izzy this week getting a car accident Wednesday night. Terrible. She did nothing. She was minding her own business, sitting at a light, and boom, gets hit by a car. You know what? The police officer came and told her, it's not your fault. You're not at fault. And, of course, Izzy was shaken. Izzy did the right thing. She dialed 911. She called the officer right away. She did the second right thing. She called her dad. Her dad was there for her. Our parents need to be, mom and dad, you need to be there for your kids. Grandparents, be there for your grandkids. Be there for your kids. We need the families to get back together. Let me get back to the message. In Galatians 2, 6, it says this. But from those who seem to be something, those who seem to be something, Whatever they were, it makes no difference to me. God shows personal favoritism to no man. God shows favoritism to no man. For those who seem to be something added nothing to me. Nothing to me. In James, the book of James, uh, uh, starting in chapter 2, verse number 8, it says this. If you really fulfill the royal law, if you truly fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor no matter what color your neighbor is. I grew up in a white community. I remember the first time a brown family moved into town. My little brother liked the little girl. When grandpa saw her, he was from old school. He made a remark, sarcastic remark, shouldn't have been made. My mom rebuked her dad. But the Huffmans became our friends. Tony Huffman's cousin, um, Mills, played in Romulus High School basketball. Terry Mills became a Detroit Piston from our neighborhood. I grew up in Wayne. That first mix, we allowed the first family to come in. I was in fifth grade. And then the next, and then the next. You know, we can't handle where people are going to move to. We just need to be prepared in our heart to love them like God does. Watch this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, you do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin. 
and are convicted by the law as transgressors. If I had a black, I didn't bring black. If I had black, I could put it on every single color, including the blue, which we saw last week, all over. Everything went viral. Everything. You know what? You can be famous for 15 minutes. Another message I will now work on because fame lasts 15 minutes. But guess what? That man's demise is going to be coming. And, and the blackness, whatever your sin might be and whatever color you are, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. We know that we do. So please, please hear me. Ease up. Ease up on yourself. Ease up on your family. Ease up on those at work. Ease up on the people at church. Ease up on people on the streets. Let's all set back. Just set back and relax. Let's have fun. Let's play with Play-Doh the way it's supposed to be. Let's, let's, you know, if we feel marred, let the potter work our clay. Let us be remolded for God. Remember Acts 10.34, what we started with? It said this. If, number one, my question again was, if you were to die today, would you go to heaven? And Peter said this, then Peter opened his mouth and said, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. God shows no partiality. Here was Peter, a Jew, being sent to the Gentiles. And you know what? He was sent to Cornelius' house. His time with the Jews was over. It was time now for all the other people in the world, all the other colors to start coming together. If God hadn't spoken to him, how about you? Is God speaking to you today? Is God speaking to you? I want to finish it with two more verses. In Acts 23, if you've ever blown it, and we all have, I can raise every single hand, foot, everything. We've blown it. We've just lost it. This is what the Word of God says. It's red letters in later in the book of Acts, chapter 23. Remember, Jesus went, ascended to heaven in Acts 1. But he's back speaking to Paul in Acts 23. Paul is mad. He was mad at the people. He called them whitewashed tombs. Paul was upset with the people. Look at the couple verses before that. I'm in Acts 23, verse number 11. Look at a few verses before that, and you'll see why Paul was mad. But watch this. It says, but the following night, the Lord stood by him and said, be of good cheer. I'm telling you right now, be of good cheer. Paul, for as you testified for me in Jerusalem, you must, you must, you must also testify me in Rome. He was upset at himself because he blew it. He was in front of a high priest. He didn't get to tell the high priest because he was so mad, throwing slander at him, that he didn't even realize the man he was speaking to was a high priest, and he could have spoken spread the gospel, and gave him Jesus Christ. Instead, he made him mad, and Paul was mad. And then Jesus came and talked to him and said, but be of good cheer, Paul. I'm still going to use you. I'm still going to send you. I'm going to send you to Rome. And I want to close with this in Acts 15, verse 8 and 9. So God, so God, who knows the heart, acknowledge them by giving them the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, that's what we've been talking about. Who is the Holy Spirit? Where is the Holy Spirit? Right here, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, giving them the Holy Spirit, just as He did to us, and made no distinction, made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith faith in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this word. We need you. Holy Spirit, we need you. And the only way to get you, Holy Spirit, is by confessing Jesus is 
Lord, we need to repent. We need to say we're sorry. We need forgiveness. Father, forgive us for how we've been treating others, other colors. From white, yellow, green, red, orange, brown, and black. Father, forgive us. Help us pray for those officers who are protecting us across this country, across this free country of America you've sent us to. To this blessed area that you've sent us to with purely four seasons, with lakes all around and golf courses all around and hunting and fishing and, and just fun. Fun, God. Farms can grow here in Michigan. In other countries, they can't. You sent us and blessed us here. We can eat freely. We can drink clean water all the time, fresh water all the time. It, it's just a wonderful place to be, and I just thank you, and I praise you, and I give you all the honor, glory, and praise, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.